All right, today's lecture is about the element of line. And a line is a continuous mark, which is usually made by a pen, pencil, or a brush. Lines can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, straight, curved, thick, or thin. Okay, so here you can see here is a line, just a line in the grass. Um, because a line can be made by anything. It can be made by an art element, but in this case, it is someone walking back and forth, back and forth, until a line has been created. Um, Picasso is making a line using light and um, a time-lapse uh, photograph, and so he's moving the light around the fire around, and that creates a line, and now the photograph has created a line. Okay. So line is the most familiar art element. We, when I, if I told you, okay, sit down and draw um, anything, a tree, we would immediately start drawing a line. We wouldn't draw a shape or start doing texture like most of us would go straight towards line. Um, it's what we think of when we think of drawing and line is, we, but we also use it in writing. So as little kids, we learn immediately um, how to make a line in school and how to turn those lines into numbers and letters. And so a line is the most immediate or familiar type of art element. So there's different types of line. So there's an outline, contour line, cross contour line, gesture, applied line. These aren't, there's other lines, but these are the main ones. Like if you're taking a drawing class, and they um, teach you those, these would be the main lines. So let's talk about that. So an outline is just simply the space around the an edge. So here, the so outline of like um, a person could be seen seen as a silhouette. And this isn't really used that much. And this is a um, example where it's used, but it's not used a lot in art. Um, but it's good to know what an outline is because a contour line, sometimes students get confused and think an outline is a contour line, but it's not. Contour line is like all the lines that make something up. So on my hand, it is the edge of my hand, the outline, but also the wrinkles, any parts of my fingers that are overlapping, the edge of my ring, the edge of my fingernails, all of that is line work. Um, so again, another Picasso drawing, there's lines uh, making the wrinkles in, uh, in his clothes, uh, the wrinkles in his hands, all of those things. So um, a lot of times uh, students, when they do in drawing, we're not going to do this, but in a drawing class, you do in contour, the, the professor, the teacher makes you do it uh, blind where you're not looking and it really teaches you to observe. So you're not looking at your paper that you're drawing on, you're looking at just the object or the person and um, it really makes you have to observe what you're looking at because the more you observe, the more you draw or the more you see um, and you have to draw these all these details. And so that's why a lot of contour drawings feel very off. Also contour drawings deal with the parts of things rather than the whole. So you're really focused, like, so if I'm drawing my hand, when I'm drawing the knuckles, I'm really focused on the knuckle and the lines of the knuckle, but I'm less focused on the whole, which can make things a little bit more dis distorted. Okay, cross contour is similar to contour, except for your, you're not drawing exactly what you see, but rather you're drawing the form. So form is like, here's my water glass. This water glass is three-dimensional. That's the form. So a shape is flat. Form is three-dimensional. I'm drawing a line to show the form. So in this image, the lines show the form of, of the shoe, and that is... Uh, and so you're using line to show form um, rather than just detail. Okay, gesture, unlike contour line, gesture thinks of the whole image. So it's drawn fast and you draw the whole image immediately. So with contour line, you're drawing really slow and you're focusing on the parts. 
gesture line, you're drawing the whole image and you're drawing fast. Gesture shows emotion and it also shows motion. So movement and then also emotion. So um, in this drawing, if you look at the emotion, right, it's really strong. Um, so I'll tell you, so we know there's something upsetting this woman. And, um, and so knowing the story, it's grief. So sometimes when I ask students what's this going on, some people pick up on the grief and then some people pick up just like that it's really hard to be a mother. But it's more than that. It's, it's grief. And it's grief for the loss of her child. Either the child has already died or is very sickly. So this was made during, um, in Germany, Kathy Kollowitz was a German artist and she worked between the two world wars and there was a famine um, where she lived and so she was documenting the famine. So most of her work is more uh, uh, finished than this and this, this is an example of a very quick sketch that she drew. Um, and, but she was able to get so much emotion out of this sketch. Why is there so much emotion? There is the way the the figure is sitting, obviously, and with the baby in the lap, and the, her hands are like this, and her head's up. That creates emotion. But if this was drawn in a lot of detail, there might still be that emotion. But the but in this one, the line also creates the emotion, and so we know that she's feeling intense grief or sorrow we know something is really off and um and so she she this line is placed on the paper and it's very dark and you can imagine kolowitz putting on the paper and pushing really hard and it's like scraping the paper it's pushing as hard as possible and we also know that it's pushed fast and with fury. We can just see it while how the line is placed on that and that adds to the emotion of the image. Um, so gesture line is really, it's not a slow drawing, it's not a developed drawing, but it really focuses on how the line is created and how the emotion is created through the line. Okay. So... My, let's see. Okay, so applied line. Applied line is not actually a line. It's really a line that is created uh, from our eye, and it's a line that is that it it drags our. So a line will really drag our line, our eye across an image, but a applied line is a line that we. It's not there. It's implied. So, for example, if we look at this figure here, her eyes are looking there, so there's a, like we follow where she's looking, so there's a applied line to her. His eyes are looking this way, so there's a applied line looking this way. Same with the hands, like his, there's a line going from these two hands and a line coming from here and down here, so the, her eyes are looking this way, her eyes are looking down. So everywhere that there are eyes looking or hands pointing, that creates an implied line because it's uh, it moves us across the page. Um, but yes, it's not actual. So line quality, um, line quality is very important, and you're going to be the, your assignment is going to be on line quality. So make sure you're paying close attention to this part. Um, how a line is drawn can express both mood and motion. It can also express um, actual, uh, so, uh, sorry, lines can be nervous, angry, quiet, excited, calm, or graceful. Lines can feel fragile when they're thin, so they're delicate or even breakable. Um, lines are bold, strong, and give emphasis. So let's look at that. So this image, there's a woman, she's quivering, she's afraid. The line is also quivering and it feels like the fear of her is related to the fear of the line. They are mirroring each other. On the other hand, this image, the, the there's a lady crying, um, but her emotion of sadness is, it's not really felt by us because the line is so bold that it feels like ironic um, and it feels a little bit humorous. It doesn't, so the lines are not, and the, 
the emotion of the image and the line of the image aren't mirroring each other and that and because of that it doesn't create the same response it would be if the lines were uh, delicate and felt sad in some way okay so there are an infinite number of lines you can create to express every imaginal mood um, so when you're thinking about line direction this really gives us a starting point when you're making a line right so different lines create different feelings so um, in the slide lecture or I mean sorry in the the notes um, on the page that you access this video I have all these definitions here so I'm not going to go over them right now but I will go over them in each picture okay so <clears throat> um, horizontal lines feel very stable it's like uh, well, more than stable like calm um, so they feel very calm it, it's like us laying down on our bed it's a calm restful um, direction of a line and so we can see in this the plan for this house um, Frank Lord Wright um, that that the house feels like the movement is going outwards it feels very grounded into the earth and it, this house was built um, I think it's in the Chicago area and so it's a uh, um, part of the country that has a lot of flat land prairie land and so he really represents that wide space and the really down into the earth um, by having these horizontal lines so lines that are horizontal can feel grounded they can feel peaceful they can feel calm vertical lines um, so they they also don't feel a lot of movement but there is a sense that they could start moving so right if someone's standing um, up and they're just standing there's a potential for moving all they have to do is pick up their foot and start moving right if you're laying down there's there's more to movement you have to get up and then start walking when you're already up standing walking is very simple you just move a foot and so vertical always kind of feels like there's potential for movement without there actually being movement um, also if the lines go up really high like in a cathedral they feel like um grant like grant the sense of grandeur a sense of awe a sense of spirituality a, some, a sense that something is bigger than ourselves so the artist here Mondrian has kind of alluded to that with the light shining through that trees are kind of they're going off the page so we have to look up higher we can imagine how grand these trees are how big they are um, and so we feel a little bit small um, also there's an allusion to the fact that the trees aren't completely stable because some of the trees are diagonal so even though they're standing straight there's a potential of movement even that movement could be the wind coming or it could be even it could be a sense that one of the trees could fall down so there is still um, illusion or a alluding to movement um, diagonal lines are all about movement a diagonal line is in movement we can't stand diagonally so um, if we are diagonal we are moving and you can see that with this image it's like there are boxers and or wrestlers or something and they're they are moving um, their bodies are in a state of movement horizontal and vertical lines are kind of the opposite of diagonal they're very very um, stable if you want to show stability then use both horizontal and vertical together just like our house is made with the vertical and horizontal lines anything that combines those feels uh, stable curves uh, curves are sensual they are comforting they remind us of the body um, they can also remind us of nature so the, this image is pretty abstract but there's references to both the body and nature in them um, so they are they are warm um, comforting they can also be sexual um, so curves really connect feelings about the body um, and then zigzags 
are represent like very high energy emotions. So that could be a good emotion like excitement, but it also could be a bad emotion like nervousness or anxiety or um, or fear. Um, those kind of emotions can represent with zigzag because zigzag is intense. There's a lot going on with a zigzag. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to represent one of those more intense emotions. Okay, so um, low battery there. Okay, so we're not going to be worrying about value in your assignment. You need to know this, but in your assignment, you won't be drawing value. But I do want you to know how to create value with line or, or just recognize it. Um, and if you take drawing or you have already taken drawing, you would have done these assignments. So a continuous contour line, if you're using contour line, it could create value um, if you are continuing the line um, and putting more lines where there is sh shadow. A scribble line or a gesture drawing, as you build the lines on top of each other, they become, uh, create more value. Cross hatching line um, is just, you can see, hatching is just the one direction like this, and then cross hatching is when you add the other layer. Um, and cross hatching, the more layers there are and the closer together the lines are, the darker the shadows become, and when they're farther apart, the lighter they become. And remember value, if you don't remember from other classes what value is, value is just from light to dark and all the grays in between. So from light to dark. Stippling, this is, um, stippling is a dot, but a line is, a dot is a line, right? It's a continuous mark, it's just a very short continuous mark. And again, dark to light dark to light all and that um, can be used to create value also uh, so Vincent van Gogh is a really great example of of um, using both line as emotion and line as value so he is really showing the emotion in the person through the lines around the eye eyes there's kind of there's a wariness and it and um, he's showing that and then the, the background has kind of an agitated feeling to it because of all the dots and little dashes there's a sense of movement and that it's not stable um and so he, and then he's using contour lines and um, stippling lines and little dashes and little dots and um, cross uh, uh hatching lines through here contour through here uh, more hatching there. So he's just really using a lot of line and he's really using them to express emotion also. But, oh, and then we're done. So just continue going through the module and eventually you'll get to the assignment. Okay.